I was at border control and I was a bit nervous because, you know, they're kind of scary there, they're kind of intimidating. The guy was questioning me for why I was here in the country. So he said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm an artist. And he's, he looks around, he shoves a piece of paper in front of me and says, draw something, quick, you have 30 seconds. Has this ever happened to you? You want to get better at drawing and you ask people for advice, you might look to for advice from artists and they tell you to draw every day, no matter what. So you think, okay, right, I'm gonna draw every day. And so you set a time and you draw, but you find that you're drawing the same thing every time. Maybe your thing is you draw faces. You just draw faces. And before long, you end up drawing so many faces and you just think everything I'm drawing is the same and this frustrates you, you get, nothing's coming to your mind whilst you can draw that thing really well because you've drawn it loads of times maybe it's a face it's not satisfying to you because it's not something new and whenever you think of something new to draw you can't think of anything your mind draws blank you get frustrated in this way and because you're frustrated you don't want to draw, you don't find it enjoyable. And then because you don't find it enjoyable, you, you stop doing it as much. And for a while you fall out of love with drawing and you kind of go and do other things. Maybe you do things that are less productive, like play games. After a while, you kind of miss drawing. And think of an idea and you come back to drawing, but then you end up after a while you have the same problems and what's worse is the problems are even worse because you haven't been practicing drawing it's kind of like a negative spiral have you ever had anything like that anything similar because I, I feel like that's a problem people have because people ask me I want to draw but I don't know what to draw you know I get that comment quite a lot I don't know what to draw can you help can you tell me what to draw I think I can explore that subject in this video and maybe give some advice, some tips about it, things that I've learned from other people as well, and also clear up a few misconceptions that I think there are, that uh, I think exist in the art community. Give a different perspective on the whole thing. I think the first thing you probably should do, if you are that kind of person, you need to change the way that you see art and change the way that you see yourself in relation to art. So your relationship to art, I think, should change. You're not a drawing machine. I don't want you to see yourself like a drawing machine, just churning out endless drawings. You, I don't think you should see yourself either as like a technician, like an athlete, you know, like a, a, an athlete who has a really good long jump. That's not your thing. You are, more than that, you are a thinker, and you are an explorer of ideas. You are actually, more than creating things, you are kind of uncovering things that are there. You are kind of uncovering truths. And to uncover truths, you need to explore the truths. You need to actually go there. You need to visit. And I don't mean physically necessarily. I mean, you need to find them and kind of maybe document your explorations. So if you see your sketches and your sketchbook as a documentation of your explorations, conceptual explorations, which can be in the physical realm as well, you could travel to another country and uh, document your explorations in that way, but it can also just be mentally. You're exploring with your mind in this infinitely interesting landscape and, and you are documenting your explorations. That's how I think you should see yourself. Instead of being good at making drawings, right? And that's how you're valued in this community. No. And also, you know, as a technician and you know, oh, I, I need to improve my fundamentals. Yes, it's good to improve your fundamentals, but more than that, for, for ideas, you need to be an explorer. Okay, I've repeated myself too many times there, but uh, you get the idea. If you're like a, a, an astronaut on the moon and you're exploring the lunar landscape, you're looking for things, right? You need a vehicle, perhaps. So you have like this buggy as your vehicle 
and the vehicle takes you to different places and it allows you to see more things, right? So I, I think that your sketchbook and your pen and your drawing skills are like your vehicle in this exploration. They are taking you to places and they are also documenting your exploration. But that, that's kind of like the vehicle that you use to explore these interesting places. So you can only explore that place properly when you draw it because drawing is the act of seeing and, and perceiving. When you draw something, you have to notice it. You can't draw something that you don't notice. So if you're drawing a building, and it's a complex building, it's got loads of different like slats and, and windows and things, if you just look at it, if you glance at it, you're not fully seeing it. Your mind is kind of filling in the gaps, and you might notice one or two things about it, but you're not actually seeing the full thing. If you draw it, you have to see and notice everything about the building because you have to draw it. Anyway, like, that's another kind of concept of mine, but um, yeah, drawing is also the act of noticing. Also, just to, I, I just wanted to add, I talked about um, an artist being like an explorer. I think that's the strongest likeness I can, can do, but there are also a few others that you could be. You could also relate it to being uh, an alchemist. So an alchemist takes one thing and another thing and kind of smushes them together and sees what happens and tries to come up with something new and novel from that. Um, another thing is like uh, someone who's uh, like a talk show host or something, someone who's stimulating discussion amongst people. So you are trying to have a conversation with your audience and with the artist community. That's another way of thinking of it, it's like conversation, like what would you say if I posed this to you? What if I played devil's advocate here and said that your opinion on this is wrong and that in fact blah blah blah, you know, and, and using that you create a conversation but you say it with your artwork. Your artwork has to communicate that, not not your mouth, you know. So that's another way you could uh, see it, or or as like a, a, a kind of crusader, like a uh, someone who debates people and goes to war with them. And I firmly believe this about my thing, and I want everyone else to think it as well, because the world would be a better place if everyone believed. This. That's another way as well. So there are different ones, but I think any of them or combinations of them would be much better than seeing yourself as like an athlete. There is this one chart and you place here on the chart, like for high jump. Oh, he gets, he scores at the two meter mark. So I, I need to also address the common misconception that you need to draw every day. Um, like it's exercise, it, it, it is exercise uh, from a technical standpoint. Now we're talking about ideas. Now, sometimes the amount of drawings that you do can mislead yourself to think that you're really getting somewhere with your ideas where you're actually not. First of all, I am a professional artist. I, I do it for a living. I, I am coming from that standpoint. You need to know that. So the idea of you need to draw every day, but it depends what your profession is. And you need to be very specific about this. You know, I'm an animator and I don't animate every day and I don't draw every day yeah I don't <laughs> but there are some days where I just focus on business and I answer emails and I negotiate with clients is I write contracts and things you know and, and I find that's good there are some days where I just work on my portfolio and I will just update my portfolio, update my social media, things like that. You could mislead yourself to thinking that you're making great progress conceptually you're, with your ideas when you're actually not. Um, and also it kind of, um, it's inefficient a lot of the time. You know, if you force yourself to draw something when the idea is not there, like the fuel is not there, to draw it and you're just drawing for drawing's sake uh, yeah you might be improving your muscle memory for your hand so you can draw better but you might be drawing 10 drawings when you only needed to draw one 
your drawing to thinking ratio is messed up where you you're drawing more than you're thinking so you're doing 10 drawings for every one drawing that you actually need do you see what i'm trying to get at? i i think i i think i didn't explain it very well but i think it's in there Okay, I'm, I'm going to now go into another section which is going to be sort of techniques and theories to help you to, to have great ideas and to come up with them, to find, to find these ideas, alright? So, uh, actually my friend Isaac, he wrote a post recently and one of the ideas stood out to me. Think of what you're going to draw before you draw it. So, let's say you, you work an ordinary job where you can't draw and then when you go home you go to draw. I, I would advise you, you, you're thinking about what you want to draw. Have it pent up inside you, you know, like, be thinking about it all the time to the point where you're just going to burst. And then you get home and you run and you open the page, find a blank page and you quickly start drawing. And it's a frantic, urgent thing. That's a good way to draw, you know, instead of like, Ah, now's my scheduled time to draw, got to open the page and uh, I'll just, I guess I'll just do my usual thing. You see the difference? So that's one. Keeping a notebook is really good actually, just keeping a little notebook. Now, in my um, sketchbook recently, I've been changing it. It used to just all be drawings and now it's drawings and writing, like at least half of the book is just writing down like, thoughts and, and, and ideas, things that appeal to me. Especially like thoughts that, that come into my head, they would leave and I'd forget about them very soon. So I need the notebook on me quickly to, to kind of capture that muse while it's there. Um, if I didn't have the notebook, that, that thought would just come and go, it would leave and never come back, you know, and then it's no use to me. You can't just rely on what you're thinking at the time that you're, you're drawing. You need to always be aware of the thoughts going through your head and then to know, oh, that's a good idea, I should note it down. Also, I think that um, drawing and writing and creating, you know, art, a lot of it is the act of appreciation. When you make a drawing of something, you're appreciating it. So you need to appreciate things actively. When you see something, say you're walking around a gallery, it's really good to actually, uh, if you write down or you go with someone to a gallery and tell them why you like something. Really explain it to them why you like it. The act of appreciation is really important and um, just kind of dive into it, Really, be really specific. Uh, that's a good thing to do. And you can do that in your notebook as well, in your sketchbook. The other thing is that sometimes you don't need to specifically understand why you are attracted to something. Okay. You can let the mystery be a mystery. There are certain things that I just really enjoy, I really like it, but I don't fully understand why, and I'm not really interested in understanding why. For example, I'm interested in skiing, I like skiing. I don't need to know why I like skiing so much, I don't need to know why it's so satisfying to me to be carving down a piece and to just have these perfect turns. It doesn't need to be explained. You can just say, I like, I really like skiing. Let me draw what I like about it so much. So a lot of my animations are like celebrations of things that I've experienced, things that I've done, things that I read about, you know. I get a lot of ideas when I'm drifting off to sleep. Get that idea when you're about to drift off to sleep. Have your phone, keep your phone by your bed and uh, write it down. After a while you'll come up with this huge document of ideas and then you can go to your sketchbook and you can start drawing one of the ideas. You can start storyboarding it or whatever kind of idea it is. You know, Avoid the blank page. And the way you can avoid the blank page is, is by improving on a drawing you've already made. If you're on Photoshop, instead of opening up a new Photoshop document, open up one of your previous Photoshop documents and start there. Another thing you can do, which is in, in line with the same thing with improving, flip to one of your older drawings, 
and time yourself and look at the drawing for 20 seconds. Just look at the drawing. I bet you by the time that 20 seconds is up, if you've been really concentrating, you'll look at the drawing and you'll see the mistakes in it. You'll see the problems in it. Start fixing them. Just go pick up the pen and start fixing those mistakes. Or you'll see, oh, I haven't done that as well as I could have. Let me draw another version where, and then you're off. <laughs> you don't need any more help. So this approach I call the Jake Parker approach because he pretty much came up with it or he, he kind of developed the idea. The approach is to exhaust your obvious decisions. So he basically sets himself challenges, like he, I think he set himself a challenge of like draw a hundred wizards, a hundred different wizards. So he started off his drawings with the obvious ones, the kind of Merlin type, um, cliche wizard character. After about 20 drawings, you have completely exhausted everything you could you thought of at first. And so then you out of desperation, you need to find more novel concepts and more novel ideas. It's a it's kind of like the taking the long way around with the approach because you have to make a hundred drawings. There's a lot of drawings. I feel like you could probably make something original in maybe three drawings, not a hundred, but if you're looking for some a way to introduce more, especially if you're like a character designer, this seems like a really good idea. But that that is a way that you can do it, and uh, I'm sure that works really well. Uh, I have yet to do the challenge because I'm more I'm more impatient and I'm more about taking shortcuts, and I want to get straight to the idea. Another idea is like, don't draw when you have nothing to draw. It's like, speak when you have something to say. Don't speak if you have nothing to say. It's that kind of philosophy. So that philosophy is kind of uh, in conflict with this other philosophy. So there are these two schools of thought, I think, with uh, cre creatives. The school of thought of like, turn up no matter what, turn up on time and just put in the hours. And as a consequence of putting in the hours, you will get the good ideas. The good ideas will come to you. And there's the other one, which is, I don't want to waste my time or anyone else's time by thinking of stuff to say. If you have to think, if you have to come up with things to say, then whatever you have to say is not urgent. And you shouldn't be wasting your time or other people's time with things that aren't urgent. So these two are like, in conflict with each other. You can choose one or the other depending on what kind of person you are. But I think the the idea of drawing only when you have something you want to draw can be quite useful, especially if you're a hobbyist. It works very well there, but if you are getting paid to draw, you need to draw no matter what. So I like both of these ideas. <laughs> I've got so many of these ideas. I've got another idea. Now, in the fine art world, the typical practice in the fine art world is to create sets. Photographers as well will create sets. So what they'll have is that they'll do this phase of exploring something and they'll find like one photo within their photographs, which is really good. And they, they look at it and they think, hmm, that's interesting. I want to dive deeper into this subject. So then they go and they, they explore that as a theme. So when they're making the work, they have that theme in mind and because they're diving deep into something, it's very specific and it's very concentrated and it makes for a really good gallery exhibit. I recently bought a book by my favorite photographer in the world. This guy is, this guy is one of the best photographers ever and his name is Sebastião Salgado. And he makes themed books. The one I recently bought is called Genesis. The idea behind Genesis is that um, the, the theme is that he's capturing photographs. He's traveling the world and capturing photographs as if modern day human uh, civilization didn't exist. And it was back to the time when the, the world first began, you know, and it's this kind of Garden of Eden paradise world where everything is in its natural state. A look at nature and interestingly humans are in this, uh, they're in this book, there's loads of brilliant tribal photography 
but it's in these areas where there is no modern day technology at all. It's been completely untouched by modern civilization. But anyway, that's the example of a theme. So you can do the same in your sketchbook. Go deep into the subject. Here are going to be a few obscure pieces of advice. So these ones don't really fit into any category, but I wanted to cover them anyway. One of the things you can do if you're in a public place, you can just sit and draw people. And that's that's really fun to do. So that's, that's just an activity you can do with drawing. <laughs> I mean, that probably goes against things that I've already talked about in this video, but you know, you should try it sometime, it's a fun activity. Things I do not recommend you do. The main thing I don't recommend you do is scroll through social media. So don't scroll through Tumblr, Pinterest. That is the low hanging fruit. And what's more, it's what everyone else is doing. The popular ideas that everyone is seeing are gonna to float to the top and you're gonna see all of them and you're gonna be inspired by them. If you want to know two of my really big sources of inspiration, they are National Geographic and atlases like uh, Google Earth. Um, I've got this book called The Atlas of Improbable Places. You turn to a random page in a National Geographic and it will be inspiring. Same thing with an atlas. Scroll around the, the world and just stop at a random place and zoom in and look at what it is there if you're on Google Earth. You'll be inspired. It's amazing what you'll find. Those are my methods, don't take them, they're mine. <laughs> One more thing, really quick. Sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation where you have to draw because you're, let's say you're at a convention or something. If you've got a sketchbook at a convention and people want you to draw something, there's two things you can do. You can either um, do your signature drawing, which is your drawing that you'll have practiced. So you just do the same drawing for every sketchbook. You just practice it. And because you've practiced it, you can do it pretty much blindfolded and it's really easy. So you just give them that. Or you, the other thing you can always rely on doing is just drawing what's in front of you. So if there's someone standing in front of you, you draw that person and just draw it in your own way. Or if there's no one in front of you, you could draw literally just everything that you see in front of you, a landscape drawing or you can just draw it in a stylized way, but that's something you have in front of you for reference, so you don't need to worry. So one of those two things you can do if you are caught and you need to do a drawing really fast. Those are the two things that artists tend to do. I remember one time I was traveling to the United States and I was at border control and I was a bit nervous because, you know, they're kind of scary there, they're kind of intimidating. And the guy was questioning me for why I was here in the country. It, you know, that, that's what they do, it's a standard procedure. So he said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm an artist. And he's, he looks around, he shoves a piece of paper in front of me and says, draw something, quick, you have 30 seconds. And I was completely like, on the spot, like, what do I draw? Um, so I quickly like scribbled out a drawing of my character. I don't think it was any good. I don't think it was good at all, but I gave it back to him and he kind of looked at it and I'm like, mm, okay. And uh, that was it. So yeah, you will find yourself in situations like this occasionally. I hope you've uh, learned something from this video. I hope it's been enjoyable to you. Check the description or at the end of this video for the different links that I have. I make loads of videos that help artists. I also have a Patreon account if you want to help me more. And I have a website with more advice for animators. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.